A lot of the email I get is from people asking me if their car is burning oil, why is it burning oil, is this bad, what does it mean, or do I need a head gasket, someone told me I might, why do I have moisture and coffee colored stuff on my dipstick on the, near the top, or in my dipstick tube, or on my oil cap of my engine. So I'm going to give you an explanation of how all that works so you can decide for yourself. And of course a random kitty pops in the video. Meow. Speak up. Well anyways, every car has had an oil cap. The two coolest parts of your engine when it's running is the top of the oil cap and your top of your dipstick tube. So condensation forms on there. Well, where does the moisture come from? For every gallon of gas you burn, or pretty much any fuel, you get seven tenths of a gallon back as water vapor, as water, because it's made of hydrocarbons, hydrogen and carbon. The hydrogen is combined with oxygen to make water. Well, every engine has some blow-by. Blow-by is what goes out this PCV tube and gets reburned in the engine. Get out of the way, kitty. Come on. Anyways, blow-by is actually just exhaust that got past the rings and got sort of gungied up and smellied with the oil that's in the engine. But it's still just exhaust, so it has water vapor in it. So the engine has to do something with it, or it blows out all your seals. So in the colder months of the year, the moisture goes to the top of the engine and condenses on the coolest parts of the engine, like the dipstick tube and the oil filler cap. And that mixes with the oil that's on there and makes it coffee colored or creamy colored or whatever and makes you think you have a bad head gasket, but you don't. Now if you have a bad head gasket, you pull your oil out and look at it, it's white or gray or coffee colored, well then, yeah, you have a cracked head or a bad head gasket. The best way to test for a bad head gasket is when the motor's cold, like overnight you start up in the morning. Here's what you do. Release your rad cap, take it completely off, then put it back on. Then start your engine up, put it in drive, put the brake on hard, and accelerate to 2000 RPM with the brake on hard in drive for 30 seconds with a totally cold motor. Then shut her down. A good engine when it's cold will have no pressure in there. <laughs> so be careful, be aware. It could spray you and get that stuff in your eyes, although it won't blind you. Now a lot of other people ask me about the smoke that comes out of their tailpipe in the morning. It just puffs blue for about 30 seconds. Well that's especially common in General Motors 8 cylinder cars of years gone by. Well that's caused by valve seals or worn valve guides. And those GM engines have what's called a slinger type oil seal. It's just an o-ring. It can be round or square. Well it's always round in the middle but I'm talking about the profile of it. It can be round or square. This isn't the right one for this valve. It grips the valve very well. And it sits about there on the valve. When the valve is bouncing quickly up and down, when the oil travels over that bump of the o-ring, it gets thrown off but when the engine's running at a much slower RPM and the valve is moving much slower, more oil actually runs down the valve guide and when the engine is shut off, the residual oil that was up here and on the retaining cap trickles down too, gets on the face of the valve. As soon as the motor starts, the oil is sucked in a little bit and the stuff that runs down the exhaust valve is burned as the hot exhaust goes out and that's why you get that puff of smoke but your engine isn't actually consuming oil. On the other type of oil seal, which is more common on modern vehicles, is this one. It's got a metal cap. It doesn't always have to have that ridge. It's always got rubber or neoprene on the top and a little spring to grip it to give some tension on the valve. And this is pressed on to the top of the guide, which is sticking out of the head. And it stays there until you need to replace it. So there's what it looks like when it's installed. And of course the valve just slides up and down and it grips the shaft and it prevents the oil from running down the guide. Well anyways, on 3 liter engines like in Mitsubishi's, it's a very common problem that the guide, which is like a little tube pressed into the head, seizes to the valve one day and, and gets sucked down with the valve so the guide is not sticking out of the head, it's sitting lower than the surface of the head, forms a little pocket 
this thing just pops off then and is floating around, never gets in trouble, there's no place for it to go, but it acts like a little funnel. The oil fills in that little pocket where the guide is sunk in the head, runs down the valve, gets sucked into the motor and burned off, and sometimes oil runs down the exhaust valve and does the same thing. If hot gas is coming out, ignite it and give you smoke. And Mitsubishi's, they have a problem of consuming a lot of oil all the time when their valve seals drop, pop off, or the rubber neoprene up here gets too hard and it no longer grips the valve. Like for example, if you took this valve seal off and let go, it would slide down the valve just by gravity. So I would say <laughs> that's a very common problem with a lot of modern cars, especially Mitsubishi's of the 1980s. If your car just smokes all the time, you could have a 4.6 liter Ford from the early 1990s. They had really crappy valve seals, their old rear wheel drive Fords, and they did that too, not just Mitsubishi's. But also it could be bad rings. The thing that wrecks rings the worst is no air filter on your car or a defective air filter so dust gets in or extremely overheating your engine at one point in time. Vehicles like that will continuously smoke and even smoke more when accelerating. Another reason why engines can consume a lot of oil and smoke a lot is broken upper compression rings. On worn and tired engines, every engine forms an unworn ridge here. So it's worn here and there's a ridge of unworn and you can feel it with your fingernail. Well that's called the wear ridge. Well under normal engine use the piston's going up and down and the ring is just coming up to that wear ridge and stopping and going back down again. And no big deal, it's just the way engines wear. Well, what if you've just bought a car driven by a little old lady and it had a kind of motor in it that went fast and you're a younger guy and you wanted to risk a ticket and rev that engine up to red line and drive it around like a race man? Well, all of a sudden in a couple days you might be burning a lot of oil and have a lot of blow-by. Reason being, when your engine's at high RPMs, the rod in every part stretches the tiniest bit. Well, the piston now is going just a few thousandths of an inch higher than it used to go when the previous person was driving it all those years and the ring hits that ridge and doesn't even have time to compress to get by it and it puts cracks in the ring and the ring could be broken two or three pieces no longer sealing but your engine is still running because the second ring right there is still working but you would have lower compression and you'll definitely have a lot of blow by if you have bad rings or broken rings and the engine's idling there's a lot of smoke or a lot of like air pressure blowing out of there. And that's not a coke nail, that's a redneck nose picker. Anyways, if you have constant stream of gases coming out of there, like more so than normal, that means all your rings are bad. Or all broken, or something, or few of them broken. But if it's coming out like puff, 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 that means you've got one broken ring and one cylinder, or one scored cylinder, or one damaged piston or one cracked piston. So it gives you an idea that you maybe don't have to rebuild your whole engine. On engines with the O-ring slinger type valve seals, they often get very hard when the motor gets old and tired, like usually over 20 years old, and they just break. And that's another thing that can happen. A new person starts driving that car and starts revving it high and those valves are slamming up and down at a much higher rate than they're used to. Well, the hard rubber just breaks and you end up with all these little pieces in your oil pan. It doesn't cause you any problems except all of a sudden your engine is going to start burning a lot of oil. It is possible to change the valve seals on most engines without taking off the heads. This is one of the type of tools you can use. It clamps down and squishes the valve retaining cap down and you can remove the keepers. First thing you got to do is make a special tool that screws into your spark plug hole to blow compressed air in there so the valve does not fall down when you take the spring off of it. If you want to make one, get any spark plug that fits the hole of your engine. There's pretty much only about two different spark plug sizes for car engines, so make one that pretty much fits all. So you get an ordinary spark plug and you smash out all the insulator right from one end to the other and cut off that little tip. Then you get a air chuck tool goes on your airline and you weld it to the spark plug so there's those two parts that's why I made mine this tool grabs the valve spring while it's sitting on the head and then as you can see when you clamp it down it would push on the retaining washer and compress the spring so once your compressed air 
It's blowing into the head. Clamp your spring. Sometimes you've got to tap the washer a little bit afterwards with a screwdriver or hammer. Either use a magnetic tool or a little tiny screwdriver and pop out those keepers. Good advice is there's all kinds of oil return galleys and holes in the cylinder head. You don't want to lose your keepers down on the oil pan and go running around looking for more to buy. So I get paper blobs of paper towel and stuff it down all those little holes. And then I get a sheet of cardboard and lay it underneath the motor so in case one drops I can find it on a clean surface. So once your valve spring is removed, you can get underneath here and pry off your valve seal, sometimes needing two screwdrivers or grabbing it with a vice grip and rocking it and twisting it and pulling it off. It's the O-ring slinger type. You just take those off with your fingers and just slip them down to any old position near the bottom and they'll just set themselves in the right position as soon as the motor starts. Uh, no random kitties, but my son just showed up. Hi, Adam. Yeah. To reinstall this type of valve seal, shove it back on top of the valve guide. I like to get a socket that fits over top of it and tap it on nice and straight with a hammer till it hits bottom, then it's installed. Then just set your valve spring and tool back in place. Put the retainer back on and the keepers. Brought you something because I love you. Ooh, that's good for a warm day. Thank you. Then slowly release the handle. Of course if you've got broken rings or bad rings or scored cylinder you have to take the motor out to fix it. In most cases the odd time you can uh, take the oil pan off and the heads off and just pop the pistons up through the top.